I'm Marty Stauffer. As the first rays of dawn strike these Rocky Mountain peaks, there's little activity to welcome the new warmth. The climate at 14,000 feet supports few creatures, yet life persists beneath the ice and snow. As June approaches, this frozen wilderness transforms into a world of growth and color. Wildflower seeds quickly emerge from their winter dormancy. And so do the creatures, which spent the past seven months hibernating in their underground burrows. The yellow-bellied marmot is an excellent example of adaptation to adversity. Topping the list of the longest hibernating mammals these furry rodents avoid the cold by sleeping through it. Without food to sustain them, they live off the fat reserves of their bodies. A month ago, this female awoke from her deep sleep and tunneled through the snow to the outside, driven not so much by the need to eat, but to mate. After regaining her strength by eating the tender shoots of alpine plants, she's given birth to a litter of three young. By rodent standards, the marmot's reproductive rate is extremely slow. Females don't breed until their third year. Thereafter, they bear litters of two to six young only every other year. Raising a litter each year would be too taxing physically in an environment which provides food only five months of the year. During the brief summer, marmots consume grasses, forbs, and wildflowers in lush alpine meadows. The female leaves her offspring to feed. For the next three weeks, nursing and napping will be their whole life. At first, they're covered by fuzzy pink skin. The wrinkles in their skin allow them plenty of room to grow. And grow they do, doubling their weight once a week. At three weeks, the young yellow bellies are almost ready to open their eyes. Their soft, reddish-brown fur already bears the markings of the adults. For the most part, wriggling and crawling about the nest has taken the place of napping. Not only do they test their legs, but their voices as well.
At one month, they're ready to venture outside. On wobbly legs, they eventually find their way to the burrow entrance. At first, they peer timidly out at a world of vast dimensions. Soon, the warm sun and sweet-smelling flowers stirs their curiosity. For the young marmots, this is a period of discovery and of danger. They have many predators, golden eagles, coyotes, foxes, mountain lions, and even grizzly bears all take their toll on marmot populations. A distant chirp sends them scurrying back to safety. They don't know what they're running from, only that a shrill alarm call means head for the burrow. Nightfall puts an end to the young whistler's above ground activities. The time spent in their burrow gives the marmots a reprieve in the daily struggle to eat without being eaten, a time to reaffirm maternal bonds through grooming. As the day length increases, so does the temptation to spend more time outside. Basking in the sun is one of the marmot's favorite activities. The young whistlers develop rapidly, for they must pack a year's worth of living into just five months. During the first few weeks of exploration, they began to nibble at plants near the den entrance. The weaning process has begun. Because of their shrill calls and their round bellies, they're also nicknamed whistle pigs. The young are called juveniles during their first summer, and they spend much of their time play fighting, an activity that helps the animals learn their place in marmot society. Again, their mother's shrill whistle interrupts their playing. Only this time, the juveniles understand the danger. A red-tailed hawk cruising the mountain thermals. Thunderstorms of August forecast the end of summer on the alpine tundra.
As the clouds lift, the marmots come out to feed. Perched atop a large boulder, a marmot keeps an eye out for predators. Unlike their eastern cousin, the woodchuck, marmots are much more social. Kissing allows them to exchange identifying scents, a ritual which keeps aggression to a minimum. The advantage of living in colonies is the same as it is for living in herds, such as this herd of bighorn sheep. That is, collectively, the animals are more alert for predators than any single animal could be. The young marmots now live in burrows apart from their mother, but not so far apart that they can't hear her call at the slightest hint of danger. Bighorn share this lofty domain with the marmots. Attracted by the meadow greenery, this lamb wanders away from its mother to graze. More curious than cautious, a juvenile investigates the long-legged intruder. The marmot siblings are more easily intimidated. Pestering the bighorn as if to defend its grazing rights, the marmot finally convinces the lamb to feed elsewhere. The marmots will now spend more time eating and less time sunbathing. It's as if they know that only fat marmots will live to see the coming spring. Even the bighorn loses no time in building up its energy reserves for winter. Surrendering to the autumn frost, the low-growing alpine plants wither, turning the green mountain meadows to brown. Marmots inhabit mountainous regions in the western U.S. from northern New Mexico into central British Columbia and Alaska. They're also found in the French Alps. There, these whistlers were given the name marmot, a French word meaning mountain mouse. The yellow-bellied is one of six marmot species in North America. Marmots are also called rock chucks because they live in rocky meadows or talus slides. They dig tunnels under the rocks and also use the holes in rock piles for their temporary or flight burrows. Their barrel-shaped bodies and short, powerful legs are perfectly designed for a tunneling way of life. Yet above ground, they move with surprising speed. Since they're always on the lookout for predators, a roving coyote is quickly discovered. Other marmots join in, and the warning is echoed up the mountain. Ear-splitting whistles are the marmots' first line of defense. The second 
is to never be caught too far away from their burrows. The marmot's early warning system makes escape seem easy. Avoiding danger is normally a serious matter, but marmots aren't above playing catch me if you can with a gullible coyote. The features of their mountain habitat, such as the rocky outcroppings and the endless views, work to the advantage of these bucktooth rodents. The coyote runs from one burrow to the other, hoping to catch a marmot off guard. For an even better vantage point, this marmot sits up on its haunches. Marmots live by the decree, know thy enemy. The outwitted coyote turns to hunting voles. Coyotes are extremely skillful hunters, but it takes an extra degree of cunning to catch a marmot. The rising sun peers over the jagged peaks coaxing the marmots from their tunnels below. In several weeks, however, there will be no sign of these rock chucks. The buildup of fat on their bodies keeps them warm despite the frosty morning air. Although they now look full grown, marmots don't reach adulthood until the end of their second year.
Nearby, a red fox pauses in its hunt to survey the situation. The marmot's whistle pierces the mountain air. The nearer the fox comes, the more shrill the whistle. With their sharp chisel-like teeth and scrappy disposition, marmots can usually fend for themselves against a predator this size. Distracted by the fox, the marmots don't notice a golden eagle landing in the distance. From a once empty sky, the eagle appears like a lightning bolt and swoops toward its prey. Ravens swoop down from their towering perch, watching for an opportunity to share in the feast. As majestic looking on the ground as it is in the air, the eagle spreads its wings, declaring its ownership of the carcass. The eagle covers its prey with its wings, not so much to hide it from the circling ravens, but from other birds of prey. Soon, the only danger the surviving marmots will face is the sub-zero cold. In the distance, the snow-covered peaks stand as reminders that the season of plenty is almost over. The marmots make a final appearance above ground only to find it whitened by September snow. At least two of the three siblings survived the rigors of their first year. They're lucky, for the odds were against them.
the icy winds, and shortened daylight are the marmot's cue to prepare for their long hibernation. Little by little, all the marmot's bodily functions will slow. It will take only two or three breaths a minute. Its body temperature will drop to a few degrees above freezing. For animals that hibernate, there's a fine line between life and death. As the winter skies grow cloudy and dark, the marmots sleep, well protected in their hidden sanctuary, deep beneath the snow. A marmot is one animal that knows how to make the most of summer. It also knows how to surrender its life above ground once the autumn snows begin to fly. Marmots demonstrate how nature provides strategies for survival in even the most hostile terrains. Fortunately, these rock chucks are relatively safe from man's encroachment on the high peaks of Marmot Mountain. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.